Okay, here's our setup. We're starting to assemble the ultimate gaming table. We have a large sheet of plastic that's uh, four, feet by eight. four feet by eight feet. It's uh, how much transparency does it have, Louis? Sixty percent. Sixty percent transparency. These are just two shelves on the side we got from the local hardware store, as well as these uh, structural pieces. Each of those are... Uh, the long? bigger piece, the smaller pieces are cut to four feet, so that way they'll support only the plastic. The bigger pieces are cut to, is it five feet? Or seven? Yeah, f five feet sounds right, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And then, and then these are supports for the uh, for the plastic in the middle and the legs. Okay, so we've uh, fastened the frame to the um, wood shelves, and we've centered it now on the mass of uh, plastic and shelves. Let's see, so there we've screwed it in to the ends. Now we're going to screw it in to the shelves. Exactly, so now we're going to screw them down. And then next will be the legs. And then the legs. So the legs. And there are the legs. We've uh, had to cut the lengths so that the way the height of the desk or the table will be about 28 inches. Okay, we've uh, put the table together now. As you can see, we've got uh, some railing balusters for the legs, cut to size. Everything screwed in from the sides. Go to the middle one. The middle ones have little metal brackets to hold it from the inside. The plate underneath, so that way it's level to the other legs. Had to cut the legs down so that way they weren't too high. And we're done. Next thing to do is flip it and re-put the plastic sheet in the middle, make sure it fits. Okay, let's flip it over. Alrighty, here's the ultimate gaming table. This is the complete version. Not exactly what we put together, but redone. Yeah, it was a couple of revisions. But uh, we're quite happy with this uh, final outcome now. Uh, so what do features do we got? Features, well, aside from the uh, fantastic projector on uh, underneath the table, the projecting the image, which we'll be bringing up shortly, uh, we have uh, cup holders along the sides. That was Ron's idea. Yeah. It yep. also prevents people from spilling things and messing up the table. Yeah. Very nice. Just drill the nice hole inside to get it going. Yep. So now in here's the screen. That's the plastic. And we left the blue filament on it. So that way it actually projects through. Yeah. It's hooked up with a projector underneath, which we'll show later. <laughs> and uh, it's hooked up to the computer over here. So I have on the screen here what's showing. And due to the magic of Photoshop, there you go, show how clear it's going to be. Yeah. I'm going to hit the light behind you so that way you can hopefully see a better picture of it. Yeah. Some people recognize Photoshop. You can see how clear it's coming through. Yeah. And then what I can do, we play with the lights on, but what I can do is I can turn on rooms if they encounter them. Right. Now, back up, and I'm going to zoom up on it, so that way we can do it to scale. Yeah. And we can put the different miniatures on it. That's a 10-foot square, or 5-foot squares. I'm going to hit the light again. Yeah, yeah turn the light back on. That's only good enough for us to play it. And then as they go into other rooms, simply turn them on and pan the map down. 
change the scale if need be. Right, because sometimes maps have uh, five foot squares, sometimes they have ten foot squares or larger. So we can just scale it on the fly. Show you overall map. Yeah. And that's basically how the table works. Yeah. So we have the GM section over here. Yeah. So we got GM on uh, on the far side there with, with the all walls. this. Yeah. We got the fire markers. Yeah. Or ice. Yeah. Fog. We have an arsenal of uh, miniatures, miniatures to represent things. Yeah, for got, effects. Uh, flat tokens, or the ones that are colored in. Yeah. And then we also have these. Yeah, these are uh, caps off of various uh, like toothpaste and other tubes, and we use those to indicate when a character is flying. And we also have some clear boxes for uh, characters to indicate uh, if they're invisible or something like that. Yep. So, jump. Yep. so back up and show the whole table. This is it done. It was adjusted. We only needed a smaller piece of plastic than we started with because it turns out the projector can only project so far yep. and so wide. And that allowed more room for everybody else to write and use their characters in. Yeah. And then the last thing I'll show you is what's going on underneath. Yeah. So, yeah. so the potato has to be this big to give everyone enough uh, clearance for feet. So when we have some time, we're going to, there's the projector. Uh, we're going to uh, set up some sort of fixed mount, right, to be designed still. Uh, this is a mirror that uh, a friend of ours picked up. Just uh, somebody was throwing away. So we got a good price on that. And then it's just sitting on a board that was sitting around for years in our basement. What's that? Oh, it's the dishwasher. Uh, and that's how it works. There you go. So we could sit there and play around with the projector location and mirror location to get the right, uh, uh, maximize the size of the uh, image and uh, angle. There we go.